Oh my word, is it Monday again? Yes, it is. Welcome back to your live dose of real estate reality. My name is Jackie Baker. I thank you so much for being here. We got a lot to talk about again this week, guys. So I'm so glad you're back to join me and I have a great guest tonight. So I have a real estate agent from California. So <laughs> let me bring on Joe Pareka. How are you, Joe? Hello, I'm good. How are you doing, Jackie? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me. I know it was kind of last minute that I asked you to be here. I'm like so grateful that you said yes. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, it's great. I no, love I appreciate it. appreciate it. So yeah, so market's getting a little chaotic right now. So a lot of, lot of stuff going down in the news the past couple of weeks. And now people yeah. are freaking out. Do we buy now? Do we hold off? And, you know, buyers, buyers just don't know what the heck to do. And I think the, the, the general idea right now is people are saying, let's hold off yeah, because of this NAR settlement that just came out. That's yeah. one, one of the things. Now, the other thing is that, you know, the feds are saying we're going to cut interest, cut the interest rates, you know, in a couple of months, so probably by the summer. So now everyone's like, okay, but do mm -hmm. we buy now? Because yeah come the summer, if that proposed settlement gets approved in the federal courts, now the, now the commissions are going to fall back. The buyer agent commissions, the buyers are going to have to pay. Yeah. Supposedly, yeah. Right. So I'm sure you're getting a lot of heat about this too. Yeah. 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 No, I am. It's, it's the talk of the town for sure. It, you know, it just in the entire industry and like we were talking a little bit earlier backstage, you know, it's one of those things where the, you know, the news is doing what it's doing and uh, yep. it's, it has a phenomenal headline uh, yep. and it's going to work that headline. And, you know, it's causing people to, to ask a lot of questions, which that's, that's not, that's not a problem. You know, people asking questions, wanting to know what it's about, how it's going to affect them in their purchase or their sale. Yes. I, I, I totally get it. And, and I would be doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but you know, when it comes down to what should I do? And, and like we talked about, I represent a lot of buyers out here in California, Southern California, uh, probably 80 to 85% of my business. And ultimately at the end of the day, I tell buyers, it comes down to, do you find the house that you love, that you like, that works for you, that you can afford and that you're comfortable affording? If the answer to that question is yes in a whole, then it's always a great time to buy that house. Um, yep. I'm not going to go out and say it's always a good time to buy a house because that really depends on your personal situation. Absolutely. But if you are in the market and you have a down payment and you've got savings and you know what your mortgage is going to be and you find that house, don't delay, don't put it off in hopes of interest rates improving or more inventory or the market shifting in your favor because we've seen that happen. We saw people in, in 2018 and 2019, I had people that said, Joe, I'm going to wait because I think prices are going to come down. And now how do you think they feel, Jackie? <laughs> I saw that a lot. I saw that a lot. Like last in the last two years, like, oh, the market's going to crash. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. It's not. No, it's no. Not. and I've got new for any yeah. of the, 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 the crash fanatics in the comments or watching. Um, <laughs> We still have a huge supply and demand problem, so Absolutely. it's not going to happen anytime soon. No, I don't think so. So, Joe, let me. I want to share the article with everybody that you and I were discussing. So, this is from the Wall Street Journal, and let me pull this thing up here. I was all the way down the comments. Don't mind my scrolling. So, it says you're buying a home this spring just got more chaotic, and it goes on about the real estate commissions are changing this summer after historic settlement. Buyers and sellers aren't sure whether to hurry or wait. So this is the interesting thing, right? So the sellers are going to be saving money, right? I'm just thinking about this. They're, they're going to be the ones supposedly saving on the commissions, right? It's going to be cheaper for them. So now they may be more like, okay, I'm going to, let's wait till the summer to list our homes. But then the buyers have to pay, Correct. you know, in some cases, if the, if the seller doesn't offer that buyer agent compensation, Yep. So then the buyers are going to be more like, you know, we're going to, I'm not going to pay that. And I'm not going to buy the house. Right. So we're going right. to come to a standstill again. It, we it's are. just, yeah. We are. Um, let me just read a little bit of the article here. Uh, where did it go? Let me see. Okay. So this is interesting. It's, it goes on here about the, the changes are expected. 
The changes are expected to lead more buyers to directly negotiate prices with their agents, which industry analysts say could reduce the cost of a buyer's agent, but it could also prompt more sellers to decide not to cover that cost. That's where we're going to be running into the problem. There's yep. a, the, the, that's where there's going to be the, the a lot of the headbutting going on. So it goes on here. Um, down here, commission quandary. The settlement can mean more home sellers experiment with offering a lower commission to a buyer's agent or no commission at all. While sellers have always been able to choose what commission to offer a buyer's agent, listing agents have warned sellers that if they offer below the typical commission of 25 to 3%, 3%, buyer's agents might discourage buyers from viewing that house. So that's what got this. That's why we're in this problem to begin with. That's, right. that's a good overview of this, the, the idea that we there was these assumed commissions, which, by the way, there's never been a fixed commission. It's always been negotiable. Exactly. And, and this idea that um, buyer's agents would would essentially steer their clients away from a pr property if they weren't going to be compensated at a rate they felt comfortable with. And like every other industry, there's, you know, uh, bad apples that spoil it for the rest of us. I, I personally have... <laughs> never done such a thing because no. clients come first. And I have a feeling that any realtor worth their worth their weight um, that values their own principles and morals would agree with that. Now, are there some agents out there that did say, oh, you know, client, I really don't think you want to see that house because whatever. And they, I'm sure, I'm sure it has happened. They're out there. Oh, they're uh, definitely, absolutely. They're, without they're out a there. doubt. Yes. Um, but I think that the idea that in that article that like that was a, regular common occurrence no i think no at least in my area i can only speak for what i've experienced and in no. my area i just i, I don't ex i didn't experience that listen i will tell you i don't know how the california real estate commission is but the new jersey real estate commission they do not mess around so if an, if somebody has a complaint filed against them look out they are all they're all over it. I I know somebody recently in the last year lost their New Jersey license because Oof. they were doing they were doing shady stuff. Yeah, so, and it's in California, we're like the most litigious state in the in the in the country. Like we sue if you look at someone wrong. It's like we're going to court about it. And so I thought we were bad. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's it's wild out here. And and um, quite honestly, you know, very rarely do I see um, you know properties where the commission is at a rate where it's just at a ridiculous amount to where I wouldn't want to work for it. And in those situations, that's when you go to the buyer and say, Hey, buyer, the seller is offering a, a commission that is much lower than what I'm accustomed to obtaining. And I'm happy to represent you on this property, but you might have to make up some of that, some of that price. And you just tell them that ahead of time. Or if you have this buyer's agency agreement, which exactly. is now become standard, which I think is one of the good things that's you know yeah. that's coming out of this. Um, it's already outlined in that. So this idea that you know um, the, the 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 buyer's agent commissions were this were were actually uh, an obstacle for buyers because it was it was pointing their agents to you know to certain properties over others. I just I think that's a that's a tough that's a tough theory for me to to handle again mm -hmm. at least from what I've seen. Right. Right. I mean, it, it, like we said, people have done it. There are bad agents out there. I have heard it here in Jersey. Like when I first got into the business many years ago, um, I did hear that. Um, but nowadays you wouldn't even think of it. You wouldn't even think right. to do that. But, nope. but getting back to the whole 6% commission thing that the, that the media is throwing out there yeah. that, and they're even saying I'm, I'm seeing. I've seen articles at my this week's video. It's I talk all about this too, where um, not only how it's going to be impacting the home buyers, but now people have this in their head. Oh, prices are going to come down okay. because we eliminated the six percent commission. Yeah, this and is, yeah. It, <laughs> um, <laughs> misinformation much like you know it. it well, I just I feel bad because people don't truly understand no. the ramifications of this and what you know it's it's not that it's not that prices are going to come down at all. Market no. is still the market. It's that's not going to change. Yes, you just said it. The market is still the market. I mean, I I had to explain this with a friend of mine that said, "Hey, Joe, I saw this news about uh, your commissions and like, are you worried about that?" And I said, "No, not really." And they said, "Well, yeah. it, you know, prices of homes are going to come down, so that's good for people." And I said, 
If prices come home down, that is good for consumers. Yes, you're correct in that. But why would this make, why would this, just curious, why do you think this would make prices of homes come down? They said, oh, well, because sellers don't have to pay as much money. And I said, okay, I'm with you so far. However, what if you owned a house and you went to go sell it and three months ago, your home was worth $500,000. Mm -hmm. Now, all of the sudden, out of the kindness of your heart, you're going to price your home at a lower price because you don't have to pay as much money when there's data out there that supports your home being worth a certain value. Aren't you going to want to get that value? Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that to me is a stretch. And yet every advocate that supports this judgment and supports this idea of home prices going down because of this, they've never been able to convey a reason as why they think that. They just go, oh, home price is going to come down because it's going to get right. more affordable to sell. No. 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 <laughs> no. no. No, that's not, that's not how it works. No, that's just, not. oh my God. So as you were talking about that, I just had to pull this back up again um, uh, on that article. So it says here, this woman, uh, Margie Kroitoff, a real estate agent with Redfin in Los Angeles. So oh, that's your area, Joe. That's my area. <laughs> Listed a home this past week with an offer of no compensation for the buyer's agent. The seller had been following the news of the lawsuits regarding real estate commissions and didn't want to offer to pay an agent that would be negotiating for the buyer. The house had 10 showings over the weekend, she said, when buyers and their agents asked about the commission. She said that they could ask for the buyer's agent commission to be paid when submitting offers. I don't think necessarily they won't write the offer because there's no compensation offer. It will possibly raise more questions. For most buyers and sellers looking to enter the market this spring, agent commissions are unlikely to be their top deciding factor. Now, so that the key thing there is that they said you could ask for the buyer's agent commission to be paid. That is completely true. The seller can still yep. choose to pay the 2%, two and a half, 3%, whatever, whatever they want to do. The, so the other thing also that people need to understand, the other big change is that it can't be listed on the multiple listing yep. if there's a buyer agent compensation offered, right? So yeah. we so that that deters agents from the whole steering thing where, you know, like, oh, they're only paying 2%, I'm not showing that house. I mean, so that I get to me, that is a good thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, but the thing is that you can write your offer and say, well, by the way, you know, we're also asking the seller to pay 2% or say split it, you know, yeah. like just let's, let's split the fee. The buyer right. will pay half of it and they pay half of it. There are ways around this. And I think yeah. as days go by, weeks go by, more information comes out of this and, you know, the consumers will be better educated on how to proceed come yeah. July. If it get, now remember, it's not approved yet by the Correct. federal court. Correct. <laughs> so. And also, you know, the, the real estate agents and, and the, and the real estate professionals will also learn how to better navigate it as well. So it's not just the consumers that have a lot to learn and figure out. It's certainly it's, it's you and me and the entire industry. And yeah. that kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier when we were backstage where it's like, you know, it's it, this, this topic is still a little bit hard to talk about and digest because there's so many unknowns that, that yep. we're, we, we just don't know. We don't know what the best way to respond is. We don't know, you know, um, you know, what people are going to think of it. You know, when it comes to this example in the article about, you know, Redfin doing this for 1% and I don't want to pay a buyer's agent. First off, that's always been an option, at least in yeah. my area. Again, going back right. to California, um, when you do a listing agreement, um, they're it, it they basically say right up front commissions are negotiable mm -hmm. it says right there in bold right and then you fill out what's the what's the commission going to be and then there's a spot to say you know what what the commission is going to be for each respective side um mm -hmm. now right. i do like the the fact that you know in terms of allowing buyers to perhaps have the ability to negotiate what their agent gets paid that's that that is correct and that is a good thing um, but before that wasn't needed because it was coming out of the seller's proceeds. So, mm -hmm. you know, it didn't really phase the buyer much because it, it really wasn't, you know, uh, their responsibility. Um, the, I think the other thing in terms of transparency is right now, as things are right now, uh, on Redfin, I'm not sure about Zillow, but I know Redfin for sure, uh, 
has the buyer's agent compensation posted right on there. Mm -hmm. They do. It's very is it's about as, as as transparent as as you can get in yep. terms of showing not only to the agent but also to the consumer. Hey, I know my agent is making yes. X percent on this. And yeah. now that buyer has every right in the world to go to that agent and say, hey, agent, I know you're making X percent. I want you to contribute X amount towards my closing costs or I want whatever, whatever, just as Redfin does when Redfin says, oh, buyer we will work, but we'll give you $2,000 back because we're yes. Redfin, right? right. So that's always been an option to people, yep. whether they yep. knew it or not, you know, that, that I don't know. And then it's I, up to the I think that's the problem. I think that's the problem now that people didn't, you know, people yep. didn't know. You know, yeah. so Joe, we got a couple of comments on here. Oh, love comments. Um, love. Okay. Oops, I crap my pants. Love your handle. <laughs> <laughs> what a great name. Anyway, That's good. are the buyer's agents going to be calling the listing agent to see if there's a co-op? Nobody likes to feel that pressure to beg, for example. Well, I don't see, again, we're still learning how this is all going to play out. Um, from what I understand, if you're not putting on, on the multiple listing, like where it says in section where it says buyer's compensation, yeah. um, I, from what I understand, they could put in the agent notes on the MLS if there's going to be compensation offered. I mean, this is speculation how this is all going to come to be, but nobody yeah. really knows yet um, no. how this is going to roll I, out. I have heard a couple different things. I know that my regional MLS um, is talking about adding a field where it says seller concessions, which oh. is basically the same difference. <laughs> and it's going to yeah. have a percent there that the seller is willing to provide as buyer concession you know, to the buyer. Now, right. the idea there is, is that the buyer could use those concessions in any way that they want. It's not specifically allocated towards the buyer uh, representation compensation where yeah. that's what we have now. Yeah. So the buyer could, the buyer could say, well, I see the sellers giving me 3%. I want to use that towards my, towards my closing costs. Mm -hmm. And, and there, that, so that money is not allocated specifically for buyer agent compensation. It could just be to any buyer's attention. Now that buyer could say, well, I owe my agent. Again, all these numbers we're just using out of example, right? Yep. I owe my agent 3% and the seller's going to give me 3%. Hey, that means that I don't have to come out of pocket. So that means that I don't have to actually pay my agent. The seller essentially is willing to give those concessions. So that's something that we're seeing as possible. The other, the other theory I've heard is now it would be okay for individual brokerage sites to list the compensation on their website for their listings. So you could go mm -hmm. to bestrealty.com, you know, if 123 First Street was listed by bestrealty.com or right. best Realty Inc. You go to bestrealty.com, find the address, and it would it could say on there. Okay. So there still is an opportunity to have it possibly listed in some form in the MLS, but also yeah. online. But again, it, it's all it's anybody's guess right now. You just exactly. You know. Yep. Like I said, we're it's all starting to shake out. We don't know yet what to how this is all going to play out. Okay. GMAT says there shouldn't be a need to have a buyer's agent to buy a house. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. I'm so glad too. <laughs> so, thanks, GMAT. Yeah, thanks. All right. Stir in a pot. I love it. So <laughs> here's here's my answer to that. And as you were talking, Joe, it just it just reminded me how um people are thinking, oh, we don't I'm just not gonna pay a buyer's agent. I'm gonna go directly to the listing agent. Now, yeah. for a lot of people, specifically first-time buyers who don't really know what they're doing, they're not getting any representation if they do that. If they're going to go work directly with the listing agent, the listing agent is not going to care. They're going yeah. to they're working directly for the seller. They're not going to help you with negotiating, with the inspection stuff, none of that. So you could be leaving money on the table or actually you're going to be, <laughs> it could cost you a lot of money if you don't, um, if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, there could be red flags that you're missing um, look for somebody who's an experienced home, a homeowner, you know, the buying their next property. I get that, you know, you, you feel you can do it on your own, but there are so many first time buyers in the market right now. Like our millennials, they don't know, they, they don't know what they're doing. They need the hand holding. I, I had a buyer client today tell me multiple times we were going through a property walkthrough and he, and he turns to me and goes, Joe, I've never done this before. You're going to have to, you're gonna have to guide me. Like, what should I be looking for? What should mm -hmm. I know? And I was like, you're, you're in luck. Cause that's my job. The right. other thing too with that um, question is, you know, this is assuming that you can have dual agency. Some states don't even allow that. 
Right. It's not legal in every state. You know, I, and so to say, well, I'm just going to go to the listing agent and have them write the offer for me. Yep. There, there could be legal implications where they say, I can't do that. And even if they can do that, they're getting paid whatever their wage is. Again, we're just going to make math easy. And if we just go off the media's headline of 6% commissions, let's just say, okay, we're cutting it. It's 3%. Well, if that listing agent is getting 3%, to represent the seller, he's not getting paid to represent the buyer. Exactly. So why would he represent the buyer in any right. thorough, diligent way? They won't. They, they won't. won't. They won't. Now. And now, now you have a buyer out there that is just hoping that that agent is just doing a, a, the, a, out of the goodness of their heart is, is leading them in, a, in, a, in the correct direction. Yep. And that's why you need, you know, it, you can do a lot of things yourself. You can work on your car yourself. You can fix your plumbing yourself. You can do all sorts of things yourself, but at the end of the day, a lot of people value professional expertise and guidance and advice because mm -hmm. it's worth what you pay. It is. Absolutely. Amen, Joe. Thanks for saying that. So GMAT says, thanks. Agree. All right. I'm so glad you agree with us. Thank you. I Thank agree, you. Matt. Appreciate it. All right. And we also have another comment. I suggested a segment in the video on the broker slash agent compensation relationship, I think most new buyers don't know. That is true. A lot of yeah. people don't understand how that works. Um, but now it's like, it's all going to change. I mean, the way it is. Yeah. I, it's so to go into, so I, so really quick for those, yeah, we, people, we can do a quick breakdown. Quick of this, break up. So, so people, so people yeah. are watching right now. If you're watching on the replay, if you don't understand it, the way it worked, Let's use that 6% number, even though I hate it. We don't, I hate we don't, it. We're gonna we don't use, use it. it here in Jersey. I mean, I mean, there are some agents that do, but general rule is like 5%, but we also have discount brokers here too that charge that charge 3.9%. There's one broker seen, that charges. I've seen everything from three to 10%. Yeah. The whole gamut, everything. Yeah. So, so say 6%. Okay, so what happens is Somebody wants to sell their home. They hire they hire the real estate agent. The real estate agent then turns around and says, "Okay, um, the commission is six percent. Three percent is going to represent me, the listing agent, and we're going to be offering three percent to the buyer's agent, who you know who's going to be bringing the buyer to buy your house, right? That's how it always worked. Yep. Um, so now, come July, that the seller can say, "I'm only going to pay you three percent. Your end of the deal." I'm paying zero out to the buyer agent. Let them figure it out. So yep. that's basically how it's worked in the past. And people have said that it's not fair, you know, that the seller has to pay that. And people are saying that, well, the commission was baked into the price. So essentially the buyer is paying it. I have a whole, like, I, I don't know. I have a whole issue with that too. <laughs> when people say, how do you feel about that, Joe? When people say, well, it's baked into the price. Yeah, I, I've never liked that, but this is this is what I will say uh, in you know in my regards on how commission has has sort of the legacy commission model. I think is what they're probably going to refer to it from now on. And right. Um, first off, without that buyer and without the loan that they've obtained through their financial responsibility and their uh, ability to save a down payment, the house doesn't sell. Right. So so you think, oh well, you know the whole idea of I'm a seller and and the seller I'm, I'm paying this buyer's agent to uh, to negotiate against me. Well, no, what you're doing is, is you're paying a buyer's agent to bring you a well qualified buyer that's going to close on your home and ascent, and and basically get you whatever net proceeds that that you have in the form of equity. Exactly. So without that buyer being there, there is no commission. So this idea, you know, there is no seller proceed. So right. so. You know, this idea that the seller is paying for it, it is coming out of their proceeds. So I'm not going to completely say, well, that that's ridiculous because there, there's some truth in that. Mm -hmm. but also, the buyer is the one financing it and paying for it mm -hmm. and, and paying for the home and allowing there to be any proceeds. Right. Um, so uh, I, I, you know, it's I just think that 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 probably was the best way to handle it. And, and again, um, we got to this model because we felt buyers were being underserved and underrepresented. Absolutely. That's how we arrived at yes. what we currently have for the next, you know, three months or so. Right. Um, and now that's changing. Um, and, and like you said, Jackie, the first time buyers are the ones that are, they're the ones that are really on the hook for this. They're the ones that could be a problem. And I'll go one step further. Um, discrimination is a huge 
uh, portion of our industry. We have all sorts of disclosures in California. I'm sure in New Jersey too. Mm -hmm. We have one that's called the Fair Housing Discriminatory Disclosure, where mm -hmm. it gives you all the reasons you can't discriminate against people. It's a yes. huge long list. We all know that in this country, minorities have had a, a, an uphill battle in home ownership since the beginning of our country. This, this is, this is, mm -hmm. if this is new to you. Then you've been living under right. a rock. And now the fact that the people, first-time home buyers that have had this uphill battle, minority home buyers that have that have had an uphill battle, now may have to come up with compensation out of their pocket. It's already been it's already been difficult to save the 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or hundred thousand dollars they need mm -hmm. now they have to come up with additional funds you think well they can pay for an agent that will do it at a price that they can afford right and that's true however you get what you pay for and now all of a sudden these buyers that have had a huge uphill battle that said you know what don't worry about paying me out of your pocket because the seller's proceeds are going to pay me now, no, I'm sorry, you need to pay me directly out of your pocket. Now they're going to end up with lower quality representation by people who are willing to work for less that's going to then weaken their opportunity and to get their offer accepted. So yep. just more food for thought. Right, right. So we have Sing K here says, for just mimic, like repeating what you're saying, first time home buyers are totally lost and at a disadvantage. They will not be protected in dual agency transaction. Now he also goes on to say, in New York City, dual agency is not legal. A buyer must sign a disclosure to agree to dual, a dual agency. Same thing here in New Jersey, too. I mean, we're right across the river from New York City, where I'm at. And um, same thing. We have to sign a uh, disclosure for that. And uh, it's not fun. Dual agency, it's not the best, yeah. you know. Um, this and Now he goes on to say this would allow so many discrimination against buyer and redlining. Uh, that's a whole other can of worms. Yeah, <laughs> I just don't even want to think about that. Yeah. And that kind of goes along with what I was saying. And, and again, that's just one of these things where this is, this is, you know, this is happening under the, under the guise of consumer protection and fairness. And yeah. a lot of times, you know, we have all sorts of different pieces of legislation in all arenas of business and life, and there's unintended mm -hmm. consequences. And we could certainly see that with this, these consequences that maybe on, on paper or one idea sound good, but then once you see it in practice, maybe not so much. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, but it, it just, it bothers me like how bad, um, th this could just turn, it could get ugly, like really fast, like really, really fast with this. Yeah. But, um, okay. We have another comment. Do all realtors need to be under the umbrella of a broker? I think most new buyers don't know that the realtor has to share part of the commission with the broker to take it a bit further. Thank you for pointing that out. Yes. yes. Yeah, we do. Um, we have to be, we have got to hang our license somewhere, right? Got to hang it with a broker. So yeah. So we have, we have our splits. Um, some brokers also charge a, an administrative fee on top of the split. Uh, yeah. So we, listen, <laughs> we don't walk away with like that, that check we get at the end, I don't get excited because I'm like, I know this is like, you know, 30% of this is like already out the, you know, it's not mine, you know, yeah. and then I got to pay taxes and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm so glad this was brought up um, yeah. because this is another one of those misconceptions that I feel like, it, you know, it, especially with some of these dang reality TV shows where they're just like, you know, oh, Hey client, you want to write an offer? Great. Offer submitted. Oh, accepted. Commission on the screen, you know, and you're just oh, like, oh no, my know. God, it's not it's even like, close. Stop. I, know. Funny. I was reading the comments into the article that we're, we were looking at Jackie and I can't remember yeah. which comment I, I was trying to quickly I'll, find I'll it. it. I'll pull that back up and we can but, find it. Cause I, I was reading find the comment. One of these comments in here was like, oh, you know, a, you know, agents get a six percent commission, and then and then they get about ninety to ninety five percent of that. And I'm like, what? You do? Yeah. <laughs> where? Where? Do you where? Yeah, Tell me I, where. I'm, I'm trying to go and find it, but I've read so much. Maybe it might not even be in this, but I, I could have. Like, sign me up, Joe, for that one. Like ninety nine percent. But this is a good, yes, all, all realtors have to be under the guise of a broker. Now, some realtors can be a broker themselves and they yes. don't work for a company, but that's pretty rare. Um, oh, yeah. But but if you work for a franchise, like one of the major franchises, like C21, Century 21, Berkshire, mm -hmm. Sotheby's, any of these, 
sometimes right before anybody gets paid, they have to take a franchise fee for using their name. Yep. Then the broker takes the cut. Yep. Then you've got expenses and taxes. And before yep. that even happens, heaven forbid, if you're on a team, if you're oh, on yeah. a team, then the team gets a split too. Team, okay. You have to be a team player. And, the, and, yeah. the, and, and then if there's a referral, then there's a referral fee. Thanks for pointing that out. I forgot about the referral fee. Yeah, I've had those that. too. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. so um, what starts is, it, 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 what I liken it to is I, I, I kind of um, compare it to when a business has gross income revenue, gross revenue and, yep. and net income. Two yep. completely different numbers. One of those yep. numbers is a lot bigger and the other one is a lot smaller because there's so many things that get deducted because of the cost of doing business, fees, taxes, in case anybody yep. forgot about the tax man. So mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. So that's a, that's a really good thing to bring up is that, yes, that that quick, oh, I see a house on Redfin, 500K, buyer's agent gets 3%. Whoa, you're just going to like open a door and do some paperwork and make like 13 grand? No. 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 It, that, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very lucky and fortunate to see close to even half that. Yeah. Yep. And it just, it kills me. Like all the comments I've been getting here on the channel, like in the past week, like, you know, you, you know, good, good. You guys were so greedy to begin with. And, you know, you guys are the reason the prices are so high. I'm like, yeah, oh, I love that, that one too. That always bugged me. That yeah. one is because I am the reason that houses are expensive. Me single-handedly. Totally. We, we're the reason. Me and you, Joe. Are expensive. Did, did they, did, have they not done any research? You know, we had this thing called the great financial collapse in 2008. And we didn't build homes for a decade. We just didn't. We just didn't build new homes in terms of, I mean, we did, but in such small numbers that it yeah. is negligent. And now, now we have millennials, which is me. I'm a millennial. Yeah. And we're the biggest group in the United, in the history of the United States. And guess what? I'm a mid millennial. I'm like smack in the middle. Yep. I'm 34 years old. Yep. So we buy houses right now. Yep. So we've had 10 years of not building any houses. Yep. Then we have millennials come along that all decide we want to buy houses. Yeah. And realtors are to blame. <laughs> exactly. It's our fault. It's all our fault. Oh, yep. Interesting. Uh, he goes on to say, great answers. All agents to share what their expenses are with full transparency. I have no problem. To, I have no, I'll I'm, tell you. I don't I'm care. I'll tell, tell you exactly. You. I'm happy to tell you what, what, um, what I'm making at the end. It's not, it's not what you see on that check. We have Laura, Laura, thank you for being here. I'm 57 ha and have always been okay with renting. Now that I'm raising three grandchildren, I have been looking outbid and getting nowhere. So we are a think we are now thinking USDA mortgage. How is this affected? Now I know with the VA loan, they're not allowed to pay a broker fee. Or no. for, pay for an agent. That's like one of the non fees on a VA. I don't know about USDA. Do you know USDA, that? USDA, as far as I know, I don't know if it's the same boat, but it's a very similar boat where okay. it's, it's, they don't allow. Now, there could be other things like you might be able, and you're going to want to check with your lender, but you might be able to, Laura, what you might be able to do is you might be able to write your offer and ask for seller concessions a certain percentage yeah. and then use those concessions to, to pay for buyer representation. But the USD loan, USDA loans are unique. Every situation state is unique. Um, so you, you want to run that by your lender because there could be a world after July where you have to pay out of pocket for representation. And, and Laura's a really good example of the type of buyer that could be harmed the most. You know, getting yes. outbid, multiple offers. And now all of a sudden, if she wants good representation, she can't rely on the proceeds from the seller for that representation. Right. Um, and she has to come out of pocket. Now all of a sudden it's like, well, now I got to save more money. And as I save more money, inflation continues and prices go up. So I have to save even more money. To yep. offset that, yep. and 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 as properties become more scarce, values go up even higher. So that's a really prime example of someone that this is real life for them that, mm -hmm. is, that could face a very real challenge by yeah. what is being proposed. You're right, it is. It's 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 kind of frightening in a way because you know again it's situations. Like Laura, you want to use USDA. Um, you listen, because there are great loans out there. Like the VA loan. I, the VA loan is awesome. Great and, loan. Excellent. Right? It's an excellent loan. And 
but what kills me is when sellers see a VA loan, especially in this market. And I've seen this happened to me a couple of years ago. I had somebody using a VA and they don't have to put any money down. Right. Yeah. They freak out. The sellers they freak, freak out. out. They freak like, out. Like, do you, do you not understand? <laughs> this, is, this is something that they, our veterans can take advantage of. And it doesn't yeah. mean they're not qualified. It doesn't have, no. this has no impact on, on you. You know, I understand they want skin in the game and all that other stuff, but now the loan is good. It's a, you know, it, it is, it, it is. is. And, and if there's any group of people that should have yep. some advantage in purchasing a home and building wealth, uh, it probably should be veterans Absolutely. for everything they do for us. Um, yep. and, and for, and for serving our country and, and doing what they do. The fact that in a lot of areas that are not very close to military installations, you know, I know that in, in Virginia and, and, you know, pl those places where there's a lot of military personnel, VA mm -hmm. loans are very common and sellers are a little bit more open to them in my area. And maybe in yours as well. I see it all the time where, where a seller goes, Oh, but the offer is zero, zero percent down. And, 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 and then they asked me for 2000 in closing costs. I'm like, yeah, that's just how they have to structure it. How would it? Yeah. Giving over full price because to make up for that. Oh, well, you know, I, but I have this offer that's 20% down conventional. I'm like, at the end of the day, and this is what's always, I've never understood about sellers. They go, oh, cash is king or 50% down. Yeah, all that's great. At the end of the day, no one brings a briefcase with cash to the closing table. No. It's all a wire. It gets wired and it hits your yeah. bank account. It doesn't matter what type of loan product it is. It all looks, it all comes out the same. It goes exactly. just goes into your bank account. Exactly. So, now, there are advantages to cash offers, but a lot of the times, loan offers, if they're structured right and you have a good lender and it's gone through underwriting, yep. you can make them as strong as cash. Yep. And so, um, you know, uh, veterans, people that utilize USDA, they kind of have this sort of cloud, this gray cloud over them needlessly because sellers assume, well, you're just not as strong. And, and it's really unfortunate, especially when it comes to our VA buyers, as is we need to be giving them more opportunity and 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 increasing their ability to purchase right. homes, not weakening it. But not to, I don't want to bash other real estate agents here, but when these sellers are ignorant to the idea of like a VA loan or USDA loan, I blame their listing agent for not educating them on how that loan works. Right. 100 correct. So that frustrates me too. Like in the past, when I've had VA buyers. Um, and they're like, yeah, well, they don't like that, you know, it's 0%. I'm like, do you, do you know how this works? Like, why aren't you taught? Why aren't you guiding your client, your seller and Absolutely. explaining that to them? So again, like, you know, like we said before, there's always a few <laughs> that make a bad, yeah. you know, give us a bad name, but unfortunately if they're out there, you know, they just, yeah. they're, they're not as educated and they just, you know, they're going to do whatever their clients tell them to do, but you should right. be teaching them. Like, look, you could have an excellent buyer right here, this VA buyer. Yeah. You know, if, yeah, you could have a cash offer here, but they could be very difficult. And what happens when you go through the inspection process? Then they could turn around and nitpick you and say, yeah, you know what? I want this so off of this. So if I want money on off of this. And, and oftentimes they do. And often they, they do. They, 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 do. Have, <laughs> they have this air that, well, I've got cash. Yeah. And I've got cash. Yeah. And I'm yeah. going to say jump and you're going to say how high because you want my cash. Yes. And you're like, yep. no, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so, oh my God, I've been down that road. I have been down that road and it's just yeah. so annoying. And I get nervous, you know, when my clients be like, oh, it's cash. We don't want to have to worry about the loan, the appraisal, especially in this market, the appraisal. Yeah. Yep. That's what motivates sellers to take a cash offer. And, but then you, you just don't know. Look, I'm not saying every cash buyer is like a terrible person, but you no. don't know what you're going to be getting. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and you don't, and every situation is unique. And I'm sure, and I've done a lot of cash deals where the cash it's, it's great. It's no problem, but, and you probably see this. How many times does a cash offer waltz in when there's five offers, three offers, six offers, and they, they way overbid on the price. Oh, 20,000 over whatever mm -hmm. it is. And then all of a sudden you're in escrow and you have your inspections. And then all of a sudden that cash buyer goes, I want 17,000 back. Mm-hmm. For mm -hmm. because the door squeaks when you open it, and it's going to yep. cost me the house is at level, and you're like, <laughs> yep. What? Well, I've yep. got cash, and if you want it, I'm ready to close. And, you're, and and then these sellers get in this predicament where they go, 
they feel nickel and dime. They feel, yeah. they feel, and, and it is, it's almost like a bait and switch. I promised to pay you this, but now I'm going to pay you this. Oh yeah. Yeah. I hear that happen a lot. I hear it like, especially like I live right on the border of New York state and I never heard that, um, that happens a lot in the County, um, that I border that's in New York. They, a lot of times that happens. People are going in with cash and like, you have yeah. no, as a matter of fact, I have friends that tried to sell their house cash buyer, same thing. They change, yep. you know, it's like, no, we're going to change the terms now. Now yep. it's going to, yeah. No, no, no. You've got cash, so you're just going to deal with it. And you're like, no. No. Should have, it's just when you go with the VA buyer. <laughs> yep. Yep. You know, the other thing that's interesting that, you know, this is kind of brought up with, with this and this, the, the, the Wall Street Journal article, you know, kind of talks about this a little bit is these, these, uh, this group of people, buyers that think, okay, I'm, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to get a real estate attorney and I'm just going to pay like a thousand bucks. And, uh, I'm just going to have him draft up a contract and bingo, buy the house, which you absolutely can do, which has always been an option. This is not yeah. new. This no. is, a, you could, you could do this right now. You could do this right now. Yeah. What people don't realize. And again, kind of what we were talking about a little bit earlier is, is um, yeah, that, that attorney has a fee to draft the contract or review the contract or interpret the contract for you. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you right now that if that attorney charges you, to review a contract to write a contract and then you submit it, you got to pay that attorney no matter what, whether mm -hmm. that offer is accepted or not. Right yeah. now, if you came to me and said, Joe, I want you to write an offer on 123 First Street, I say, okay, great. Let's get your proof of funds. Let's get your pre approval. Let's make this offer strong, so on and so forth, because obviously I want you to get it accepted. Um, and it doesn't get accepted. I say, oh, well, we'll try again. There's no bill. There's no, there's no bill that goes out. And alternatively, as soon as, if that offer does get accepted and you go, okay, well now, um, now Mr. Attorney, the seller said he's going to send us disclosures. And I know that these are important. So I want you to review them, explain them to me. That's going to be another charge. That's going to be another fee. And then yep. every time you pick up the phone and call him to ask him, Hey, I read this. What is, he's got the building clock. It's on, it's on. Yes. And this is nothing against attorneys. You know, we love to dig on attorneys and attorneys love to dig on us. That's not oh, what yeah. I'm getting at. This is just, this is just, how it works. Right. And so while it's an option to go the attorney route, you just have to understand how it differs from actually using a real estate agent that has experience working with buyers. It's not right. the same thing. Exactly. Exactly. Well, here's the thing too. The, the attorneys haven't been in the house. They don't know specifics. Like we, here in, in Northern Jersey, where I, you know, my, my area that I cover, we do have real estate attorneys as well. So we got our agents and then they also hire an age, uh, an attorney to represent them. So the attorneys are relying on me mm -hmm. <laughs> because they don't know what's happened in the house. Like so there was a home, ins the home inspection issues came up. I'm taking pictures, sending them to the attorney right. on the phone with them. Walkthroughs. Can't tell you how many times on final walkthroughs. I'm literally on the phone with the attorney during the walkthrough telling them we found this wrong, this wrong, you know, to call yep. the other attorney, tell them, that, you know, we want money back on this or they didn't fix this. And, you know, this is broken. Yep. Yeah. We're, yeah. Like they, it's like we're it's, needed. I'm sorry. We're needed. Right. And, and, and especially if you're a first time buyer, you, you're going to depend on that agent to give you the best advice that, that they can. And mm -hmm. I mean, that, that attorney is just, He's going to get paid either way for what he does. And he's going to exactly. charge you every minute. And so he's just not going to be as into it. And I'm sure there's, you know, real estate attorneys out there that are great and they do a wonderful job and they, yeah. they probably do go over and above and beyond for clients, mm -hmm. but it, there's also agents that do the same thing and they, they don't get paid till it closes. And we don't get paid until they, they find that we, they close on a deal. It just, right. you're right. I mean, and that might be the first offer. It might be the 20th offer. Exactly. Um, okay. So he goes on to say here, how about lazy realtors that pencil whip the listing details? The buyer likes it, goes to see it and finds out it's mostly wrong. Yeah. That. I've seen that too. And you know what I love too? The, the, when they do fancy pictures and they, um, oh. they misrepresent Yeah, <laughs> the room yes. looks bigger. Um, you know, it, the, the room looks so, you know, the house looks completely different online than it does in person. Love that too. I and, love And, and yeah. again, you know, to that comment, that's another reason why you need a good buyer's representative. Yes. So that, that buyer goes, Hey, Joe, I saw this listing says that it's not in an HOA, but I, I don't know. I mean, I kind of think that it is. 
And I go, no, I know just by looking at that address. That's yeah. in an HOA. Yeah. I know what the HOA fee is. I know who manages the HOA. Yeah. And I know how lenient they are or are not on rules and what you can and can't do. Right. And if you don't have a buyer's representative that's working for you in your corner and you just think, I'm going to trundle down and to the listing agent and I'm going to um, just trust what they say and go with them. All of a sudden you go, what's this $147 per month charge that I have to pay on top of everything else? Oh, that's the HOA you're in. Yeah. What? Uh -huh. Yeah, right. That's why you need your agents to get in there and, and comb through it, comb through the yeah. house, look for the red flags, point things out. I mean, yeah. that's happened to me a lot, you know, working with, uh, with my buyers, I'll point things out that they're like, Oh, really? I didn't know that. Like, yeah. yeah. You know, oh yeah. I I've pointed out things before where, Hey, you, this roof, this property has two roofs. It's got a, it's got a wood shake and then a comp shingle on top of it. And they're like, how can you tell that? And I go, well, see, if you come over here and you look right here, yeah. you can see this, that, and the other. And what this means is that right now this roof's probably not going to leak because it's got two roofs. But when you do re-roof, it's going to be much more expensive. Mm -hmm. And it's not a big deal. It still means the house is okay. But this is just something that you need to be aware of. Exactly. When you purchase it, it, right. does, it might not change the course of what you do or how much you offer. But that's the type of thing that you want to know when yeah. you go into it. And you know what? Attorneys aren't going to tell you that. They're not. <laughs> They're not. They're, They're not. not. So, so Joe, as we're, while we're talking about this with, you know, the level of service that we provide now come July, if this whole thing comes to play, yeah. um, was it said before we were talking about that they could go to a flat fee service, right. Or flat yep. fee rate for buyer's agents. Again, so it, it gets back to what, how much is that agent going to be doing for you? Right. Yeah. How are we going to like, how are we going to come up with that number? Like you were saying before, you know, red, actually Redfin years ago used to charge like $250 per tour. I read yeah. this, right? Yeah. Yes. And what if it went back to that? We'll charge you 200 bucks every time I have to open a door. Um, but then if you want to handle everything on your own, go ahead, go handle it. And right. then, then what, you know, you laid out all that money and then you could be making some very costly mistakes representing yourself. So I, I just, I hope they come up with some type of like, I don't know, some type of thing like fees or like how, how is that compensation going to be determined? Does it have to be that percentage? Cause that's what makes me nervous too. When you have that percentage, say two and a half percent to go to the buyer's agent, that's thousands of dollars yeah. that's coming out of that buyer's pocket. Yep. So do we come up with like a flat fee and say, okay, we'll do this, you know, we will take you, we'll show you houses. Yeah. We'll, we'll go to the inspection with you. We'll write the offer for you. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's yeah. like an a la carte menu, right? Pick and choose yeah, what you I, want that agent to have done. You know, do I it for you. It, again, and this is one of these things where we're just going to have to just kind of see, you know, what yep. happens and how it happens. I do think that maybe there's a scenario where you say, hey, listen, um, buyer, I'm going to charge you X amount for every showing. I'm going to charge you X amount for every offer. But um, once we do close a transaction, you are going to pay me two and a half percent, but I will credit some of what you've already incurred and, 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 and we'll make some of those costs go away. That makes, that makes sense. Right. So okay. I work again, we're just going to use numbers. Anybody from the DOJ that's watching me, we're not conspiring. I'm just going to use these for, for example purposes. Okay. <laughs> um, <DOJ. laughs> if, if we, if we just say my charge is 3%, um, yep. but I'm going to charge you a hundred dollars per showing because it's roughly about an hour. Yeah. And so we're talking about an hourly charge and, um, you know, I'm going to charge you X amount to, to write a contract. But once we get to the closing table, I'm going to do that 3% minus three grand or five grand. Mm -hmm. And that way, if we don't get to the closing table, I can still be compensated. But if we do get to the closing table, which is the ultimate goal and desire, then it's going to save you a little bit on, on your end, you know, we right. can, it, it'll, it'll, but, but that's the hard part. That's the hardest part is how is this going to work? How is this all going to work out? How is so, it gonna work? I mean, so for, for people that are questioning, should we buy now? Should we wait? Um, even for sellers, should we be waiting now? Sellers are thinking, I'm going to wait to sell my house till July. Look, you don't go by the news headlines. Don't get freaked out. And this is what I tell my clients too. Don't get freaked out by where you, what, what you're seeing out there. You have to go with what's, 
working for you at that moment. Like if you're financially ready, if you have your down payment, you're pre-approved, you need that home. You have to go buy a home now. 100%. Um, just do it. Just go do it because it's all it's all a personal thing, right, for everybody, even for somebody who has to sell their home. Yeah. Okay? People ask me recently, like, you know, I don't know, I think we're, it's, it's a good market. I should sell. But it's like, are you ready for that? Do you, Where are you going? Do you have yeah. a plan? Where are you moving to? Because the market's tight. What are you buying? Do you have another right. place to go to? And they're not thinking that, but they're seeing the news that, you know, prices are up, you know, yeah. a bazillion percent and you need to sell your house. And our inventory is low, which it is. But people are saying, oh, I can get, I can make so much money in my house right now. It's like, yeah, that's great. But where are you going? You know, come up with a plan. Don't get sucked into these headlines without really thinking this through. And if it's going to take you months, then, or years, whatever, just mm -hmm. don't, don't feel like you have to jump now. You know what I mean? Um, and even for like, again, the buyers don't feel like you have to jump now because you feel like come July, it's going to get more expensive. No, no. No, it, it, it really, you're exactly right. It comes down, you know, it's so funny because you, you'll have the realtor trolls that'll, that'll come and say, oh, well, realtors will always tell you it's a great time to buy real estate. And I want to be like, well, I mean, yeah, it is. If you can afford it, it is. Absolutely. And this is the one I like to, this is the one I like to use. Jackie, if you could go back five years ago yep, and you could buy real estate, would you buy it? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> if you went back 10 years ago and you, you had budget for real estate, would you buy it? Absolutely. Yep. Would you go back 20 years and buy it? Absolutely. We can go back till the dawn of time, till the yep. beginning of our nation. And we're going to be like, yep, 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 yep. yep. You without, know? A, yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yep. So, so the idea of, is it a good time to buy a home? Generally speaking, yes. But is it a good time for you to buy a home? Yes. Or you to sell a home? That, that word's really important because it's not always a good time for, for you to buy or sell a home. You know, are, are, is your credit in line? Is your savings in line? Are you stable in your job? Are you stable in yeah. your relationship? If you may have one, all of these things add up to, to be, you know, well, maybe yes, maybe no. Yeah. Um, but the bottom line is, is the longer you own real estate, the more wealthy and secure you are. That's just the way that it is. That's, that is statistics. Right. So, so um, I, again, for those people that are, should I wait? Should I not? Should I wait? Should I do it? It comes down to your personal situation. Yes. If you find, if you're a buyer and you find a home you like, and you can afford the down payment, and you can afford the mortgage, why yep. would you not buy it? Exactly. Why, wouldn't, why, why would you wait and risk that home getting more expensive? That home going away, your financial status changing. I mean, all of these things. Yep. Uh, and, and same, same, same. If you're a seller, if you know what your plan is, if you know where you're going, if your next house is ready, if you're you know, if you're ready to be closer to the grandkids or the family or whatever, and you yeah. have arrangements, why would you wait to sell? It doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't make yeah. any sense. No, exactly. But again, people just need to fo focus on themselves and their own personal situation, whether or not it's the right, exactly. if it's the right time for them to buy or sell. It's uh, that's the most important thing. So I think this, um, I don't know, Joe, this market's going to just going to get more interesting as we get into the summer. <laughs> Yes, but, it is. Um, you know what? I'm here for it. It's like, you know, last week was just when that news came out. We, oh, my God. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And yeah, yeah. the hate that's been out there I'm seeing online. I'm like, you know, and my friends were saying it too. They're like, oh, my God, what are you going to do? I'm like, yeah, what am I, what am I going to do? It, it, look, it's we're going to be fine. The, 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 strong, the strong in this business, the strong yep. agents in this business will survive. No, um, you're exactly correct. The agents like you and I are not going to have a problem. This is not going to be yeah. an issue for us. And and yeah. as as Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park says, you know, life always finds a way. You yep. know, and and our industry and every industry will always find a way. Talk to the lenders. Ask ask lenders about trade in 2010. They were yeah. like, oh god, we're screwed. <laughs> we can't do this anymore. And sure enough, sure enough, that they were able to change a few things, modify things, change their systems and process. And yeah, it's fine. I mean, people forget that there's a possibility that we could just pretty much have the same system, except the words change. Right. We just have yeah. seller concessions and the buyer says, thanks for your seller concessions. I'm putting that towards my buyer's representation fee. And that's it. And that's exactly. really changing. That could happen too. 
Yes, it very well could happen. So Joe, really quick before we head off, we have one more comment. Yeah, what it. is our, our hand? Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. What is affording the mortgage? Is that 50% of take home pay 30, 70? I'm curious what realtors are seeing in this market for first time buyers. I will tell you, you need to speak to a lender about that. I don't like to get into the numbers with regarding mortgages, but what, from what I'm like, what I'm seeing, um, my clients, a lot of my clients, I mean, they are pretty good earners. Um, they do have a high income, but as far as what they're putting down, you know, it could be anywhere from 10%, 5% they're putting down up to like 20 to 50%. It, it depends. It's all over the board. Yeah. So if you're questioning how much you can afford, talk to a lender because yeah. they're, they're the ones who are going to crunch those numbers and give you an accurate, uh, an accurate payment of like how much you can afford. Yeah. And, and, you know, to that, you know, obviously historical says, oh, you need to spend, you know, less than a third of your take home and, and your living costs. And that's all fine and good. Uh, what I will say is, uh, yes, a lender will be able to go through with you and say, this is going to be your monthly cost. This is what you make. What are you comfortable with? You know, and, yeah. and we are seeing that people are willing to spend more money more of their take home pay on living when it comes to owning a home. People are willing to say, you know what? I know that 30% has been the historical average, but I'm, I'm okay with 35 and 40 and maybe taking a few less vacations. I'm okay mm -hmm. with, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, driving the, the older Honda a little bit longer before I move up to the BMW yep. um, because people are valuing home ownership and wealth building that equity provides. Yep. Yeah. So we have another comment here. I love the audience tonight. You guys yeah. are awesome. Is this normal, so, Jackie? This is great. Your people are great. I get, a, I get a decent amount, but they, these are all new all new viewers tonight. I'm very wow, excited. Well, I everyone. appreciate That's everyone great. being here. This is amazing. So you have T. Krulik, bought and sold real estate rentals for 30 years, always used an agent, and felt I got good value. Weeding out the frauds and phonies, bringing qualified buyers to the table. Amen. Thank you so much Preach. for saying that. Preach. <laughs> Preach. Yes. Preach. And it, it, yeah. it, you know, agents are not, yes, there's, there's one or 2% of agents out there that have these big, great fake smiles. Right. And they, yeah. and they, they have their name all over everything. Yeah, they look, they and, look good on their business cards and they're, right. and, you know, and, and then you work with them. You might talk to them on the phone one time and then, then they're gone and they just cash the check and they sell insane real estate. But that is such a small, tiny fraction. Most agents make less than $56,000 per year. Most agents are absolutely grinding for, for, to represent clients. They're, most agents are trying their hardest to do the right thing. Yes. Most agents are, are going above and beyond because here's the thing. We, it's weird. We, people want to be liked, real estate agents included. And if an agent does a good job for a client, the best thing that can happen is not the commission check that comes from it. It's that client going, Hey, my brother needs to buy and you are great. Can you please help him? That's exactly. the best thing that can happen in our world. Yep. So yep. It, 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 we want to do a good job. Again, there's always a percentage out there that suck at everything they do, but that's, that's, a, that's not a majority. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. I just have to put this up here. Kevin said, love Jackie's channel. Thank you so much, Kevin. I appreciate oh, you. <laughs> Kevin, brown close to Kevin. Feeling the love tonight. This is yeah. awesome. So this is this has been such a great conversation, Joe. Um, Excellent. I would yeah, I would love to have you back down, like say over the summer. Let's see where we are once all this shakes out. And I think I think we'll I think we'll definitely need to do a, an update, a part two to this because um, there is 90%. just so many question marks out there, and um, mm -hmm. uh, I think that would be super beneficial. Yep. A uh, really quick, somebody asked, yep. let's do it. How much, how much you have to pay your broker? Well, look, it depends. So, I mean, I can't get into specifics, but it depends on the split. Some people do, you know, um, you know, 80, 20 split 80 goes to the agent, 20% to the broker. Some like newer agents have a, have a lesser split, yep. you know, say 60% goes to the agent 40 to the brokerage. And in some brokerages also charge either a friend. So like so you were saying before, like century 21, they have a franchise fee. Yep. Um, some other brokerages charge an administrative fee. Yep. Um, it, you know, it varies. It depends on which, uh, which company, um, really quick, Aaron K 40% of take home pay is different from someone that nets 10 K to someone that nets four K. 
That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's why you need to speak with a lender to see what you can afford for your specific financial situation. Absolutely. So Joe, I just want to share everybody, uh, share with everybody your channel so people know where to find you. So if you want to know uh, all about California, Claremont and LA area, that's where Joe is. He's, this is his channel at, at Joe Realtor. Please check him out. If you are in the California housing market, you want to buy a house out there. Joe is your guy. I am your guy. (laughs) And I I primarily work with buyers. I know the buyer market very well, of course, have seller clients. So yes, if you're looking anywhere in the greater Los Angeles area, can definitely make sure you are taken care of. Awesome. Joe, thank you so much. We're at an hour. I so appreciate you being here. It's such a great conversation. Let's do it again. Absolutely. And um, yeah, and to everybody who's watching, I so appreciate everyone being here. This is amazing. Yes. Um, we had a lot of viewers on tonight. This what is a great, great vibe. This was awesome. This is yeah. great. Your, your awesome. people are awesome. All right, great. Everybody have a wonderful week, and I'll see you all next Monday. Have a good one.